this edition of Lexington Now, your Lex PD, cold weather safety and holiday recycling. I'm Neil Noah. Welcome to Lexington Now for the week of December 18th, 2023. If you're a regular Lex TV viewer, you've no doubt seen our newest program, Your Lex PD. We caught up with our two hosts to get to know them a little better. I'm Officer Bodge Tower of the Lexington Police Department and one of the co-hosts for Your Lex PD. So your Lex PD is an overview of the police department. It's a way to connect the community and the police department to let them know all about us because after all, we're your Lex PD. So whether it's a highlights on specialized units or whether it's safety tips, it's working the community, it's the community and the police department working together. So back in early 2000s, we had a show at the Lexington Police Department that was called Keeping the Peace and retired Officer Debbie Wagner and retired Chief James Jackson were the hosts of that show. And it did a very similar thing to, to what we're doing today with your Lex PD. So back in 2019, we decided to kind of reinvent it and bring it back because we felt like it was really good information for the public to have and let them know what we're doing for them and what we can do with them. So the pandemic occurred and that certainly put a, a damper, obviously, on the time frames and so forth. So several months ago, it kind of, we revisited, felt like it was a good time to do it, and went ahead with the help of Lex TV, got the ball rolling. So we started out the very first episode with the chief of police, and we felt like it was a good way to introduce him to anybody in the community that really didn't know him. From there, we're going into everything from hot topics to specialized units and highlights of units. So we have done a variety of different things so far. The Arctic was, a, was an early episode that we did, which is the real-time intelligence center. Things that a lot of people didn't know about or things that maybe they had received inaccurate information, we were able to give them accurate information and show them what we're actually doing with technology to help keep Lexington safe. So that's kind of where we started with that. So I have a couple of different jobs with the police department. I'm in the Bureau of Special Operations. So I work in both the community services section and the air support unit as a tactical flight officer. I have been a tactical flight officer for five years. I've been on the police department in January will be 27 years. Uh, I've worked with the community the majority of my career. I've worked with young people. The, the air support unit, for somebody that had been on over 20 years starting, it was like starting a new career. So it's, it's been exciting for me and, and I've truly enjoyed that as well. Nicole Owings, she is a great co-host. She is assigned to Bureau of Patrol. So that gives us a little different perspective. We, we have two completely different jobs at the police department, but she's doing a great job with this as well. Uh, we, we're really getting to know each other's jobs and that's one of the things that's coming up. I'm going to be doing a ride along with her with patrol and in a few months she's going to come back and we're going to do a ride along and let her ride with me in the helicopter. I'm Nicole Owings. I'm a Lexington police officer with Lexington Police Department and I am one of the co-hosts of Your Lex PD. How me and Baj met when this initially, when him and I believe it was Sergeant Barry, when they first were trying to put this, and it had a whole different name. So when they were first putting this together, um, my name was, was brought up. Um, I had done a lot of mentoring in the school systems um, from like elementary all the way to high school. Um, so I was, even though I was third shift, I was still very active during the day, still doing work related things and, and whatnot. And I had gotten like an officer of the year and I had gotten some officers of the month. So people kind of knew who I was and knew I was kind of out there in like public speaking. So they had brought the idea to me and I was like, oh yeah, this is gonna be cool. So that's kind of where like our partnership friendship kind of started. January will be 12 years for me. It's gonna sound kind of cliche, but um, I was bullied in middle school. And so when I got through that and just got some confidence, um, I was an athlete, um, got around the right people, built up my confidence and my self-esteem. I was like, you know, I don't 
no one bullied me ever again, but I've always wanted to take up for those that couldn't take up for themselves. So that's kind of like what we do. Um, we kind of help those that can't help themselves. Um, and sometimes we help those that don't know that they need help themselves. And so we kind of help them that way. So that kind of drew me into this line of work. I didn't grow up wanting to be um, a police officer. <laughs> I'm a science geek. <laughs> All my degrees are mostly in science related fields. Um, but sometimes the, your plan is not the plan that God put you in. I was just kind of steered in this direction and I've not looked back. I always say patrols like kind of being in the trenches. <laughs> I like challenges. So um, on patrol, we're like your very first responders. Um, we have detectives, we have a lot of specialized units, but everything starts with uh, those of us that are on patrol. So we're kind of like your, your front man, if you will. Um, we just get a variety of different calls. Um, calls for service, not necessarily criminal offenses, sometimes even um, civil matters. And we try to deal with them as best we can, even though we don't really deal with a lot of civil matters. We are more on the criminal side of things. Um, but I just, I've always loved challenges. And so it's challenging doing different things. I'm also an FTO, which is a field training officer. So when people go through the academy and they graduate, they have 15 weeks of FTO. Um, and so I do like to train and getting into all these different things and trying to get them as much experience as possible so when they go out on their own, they at least have a good foundation and a base and then they can kind of work and build themselves for the officer that they're gonna be. I've always had like some type of supervisory positions. I was a training sergeant at Animal Control. Um, I was the captain of my high school track team. I was on a track scholarship to EKU and I was the captain of that team. And then when I worked on getting my master's, I was also a graduate assistant, assistant coach. And I did the testing and I was an NCAA division one coach. So I have always been in like a position of teaching and uh, whatnot. So I just, I just enjoy teaching and helping people along the way. We just encourage people to watch the show because it is really good information. A lot of things, and we've, we've had a lot of comments, a lot of feedback already. People are learning things they didn't know about the police department. And it's a, it's a way for us to reach out and show Lexington what we're doing to try to help keep Lexington one of the safest cities in the United States. As the cold weather months settle in, it's important to think about what you need to do to avoid cold weather injuries. Here are some tips. Like it or not, winter is upon us. And it often brings hazards like snow and ice. But there is another danger that is not as frequently addressed, and that is the cold. During especially cold weather, it is best to stay indoors. But if you must venture out, here are some guidelines you should follow to stay safe. Dress warmly in layered clothing, including a hat, a scarf, or knit mask to cover your face and mouth. Sleeves that are snug at the wrist, mittens, a water-resistant coat, and water-resistant boots. Avoid exertion, as cold weather puts an extra strain on the heart. Those with heart disease or high blood pressure should follow their doctor's advice about shoveling snow or performing other activities in the cold. When outside, avoid walking on ice and keep your steps and walkways as free of snow and ice as possible. Be on the lookout for signs of hypothermia and frostbite, two common cold weather related health problems. Warning signs of hypothermia, which is an abnormally low body temperature, include shivering, exhaustion, confusion, fumbling hands, memory loss, slurred speech, and drowsiness. If you detect symptoms of hypothermia, seek medical care immediately. Get the victim into a warm room and remove any wet clothing. Warm the center of the body first with an electric blanket if available. Otherwise, use skin-to-skin -skin contact under loose, dry layers of blankets, clothes, towels, or sheets. Warm beverages can help increase the body temperature, but do not use alcoholic beverages. Warning signs of frostbite or an injury to the body caused by freezing include redness or pain in any skin area, white or grayish yellow skin, skin that feels unusually firm or waxy, and numbness. If you detect symptoms of frostbite, seek medical care immediately. Get the victim into a warm room and immerse the affected area in warm, not hot, water. Do not rub the frostbitten area with snow or massage it, as this can cause more damage. Do not use a heating pad, heat lamp, 
or the heat of a stove, fireplace, or radiator for warming as the frostbitten areas are numb and can be easily burned. These procedures are not substitutes for medical care and all emergencies should be reported to a physician or health care provider. If you follow these simple rules and exercise caution, you can weather the worst winter has to offer and come out healthy on the other side when the warm breezes of spring start to blow. When we come back, it's time to think about keeping your pets warm too. I'm Lieutenant Chris Van Brackle with the Lexington Police Department Traffic Unit. Today we are talking about disability accessible parking and the aisles between those parking places. Accessible parking is a valuable and necessary resource for people with disabilities, and that includes the striped area next to accessible parking spots. These are access aisles, and it is illegal to park here, even if you have an accessible parking permit. Police and Lex Park will write tickets when they see vehicles parked in an access aisle or parked in an accessible space without a placard, and the fine is $250. Know where and where not to park. Keep the access aisles clear. Thank you, and drive safe. Welcome back to Lexington Now. As the cold weather arrives, it's good to remember that if you're cold this winter, so are your pets. I'm Megan Hawkins, Director of Community Engagement for the Lexington Humane Society. There's always lots of tips and advice that we want to share during the holiday season and during cold weather season. So first and foremost, limit their time outdoors. You know, if we like to encourage people, if you're cold, they're cold. So think of that. When you're taking them outside for walks or playtime, be aware of the time and the limit of how long they're staying out there. They can get cold quicker than you realize. And just like we put on layers, feel free to put on layers on your dogs or cats if you're taking them outside. The jackets, the sweaters, even shoes for their little feet. When they come inside, make sure you dry them off so that they're dry and warm, there's nothing residual. If you use any sort of treatment for your sidewalks or driveways, make sure it's pet friendly, you know, salt and ice melt. And when they do come inside, once again, wipe that off of their paws. And if, this is a big if, if your pet must stay outdoors for an extended period of time, make sure that they have proper shelter. Don't use blankets, use straw. Straw doesn't freeze when it gets wet, so it's safer for dogs or cats. Make sure they have um, proper hydration, food and water bowls, plastic bowls so those don't freeze as well. And just check on them often, that's what we ask. If they have to be outdoors, please check on them often. But of course, we want them to be indoors with us because they are members of the family. During the holidays, there's a lot of gatherings. And whether you're going to someone's house or people are coming to your house, you want to make sure that your pet is contained, that it's safe, it's in a safe, calm environment. It's best to just keep things as constant and consistent as possible for them. That will result in the best outcome for you and your pet. If people come over and you know your pet is around food, it's the same thing we usually preach. No chocolate, no onion, no garlic, no greasy foods. If you give them something, small amounts, moderation, and just make sure um, to remind that message to other people visiting your household, the same thing for your pets. We want something that doesn't give them an upset stomach or anything like that. Um, and then making sure that your pets have proper identification. And that's the same thing year round, not just cold weather, but if they were to get loose or run away from you, if they're microchipped, if they have a collar and tags, it will be easier to reconnect you with your pet if they were to get lost. This comes up every holiday season. People think, oh, a cute puppy under the tree or a cute kitten like this one would make the perfect gift. No, we, we definitely discourage people giving pets as gifts. You can make that part of the giving process. Maybe go ahead and pay the adoption fee and present the person with a gift certificate so that then the recipient can go to the shelter and pick out a dog or a cat. Or make the actual visit to the shelter part of the gift and go with them. Again, the person receiving the pet needs to be the one making the decision. It's a big commitment. It needs to be their decision to add the dog or cat to their family or to their household. During a uh, year round, we can always use donations, and those donations are pretty much dog food, cat food, treats, and paper towels. People don't realize the amount of paper towels that we go through here. 
Um, and I can say at least during the next month or two, we do have an increasing need for dog and cat food in particular. We just have such a huge intake. A lot of animals are currently in our care. It takes a lot to feed them. Um, we're limited on space, so we can't store it in advance. So it's not like we can go to the store and buy it on sale. We do have to plan ahead and buy it on a weekly basis. But it's very nice if people were able to donate actual bags of dog or cat food to us. It also helps. We have a pet food pantry and assistance program for people who aren't able to buy or purchase food for their own pets, but they want to keep them in their household. If we have any extra bags on hand, we're able to provide them with that. So it helps if people donate and we can have that service as well as feed our current dogs and cats. We try to make it as easy as possible for people to donate. They can come to any of our locations, Old Frankfurt Pike, PetSmart, and Hamburg, and just drop off the donations. You don't even have to walk in the building. You can just leave them at the door, but you're welcome to walk in and see the adorable dogs and cats. And if you do want to give monetary donations, you can give online, you can give on social, you can mail us in a check, or you can come visit and drop off. I think it's important to stress not only that people take care of their own pets during the cold weather months, but just be aware and have your eyes and ears open for other pets in the community. If you see someone that's chained up, a dog or cat chained up outside without proper shelter or food or water, or you see one on the loose, then just call our partner organi organization, Lexington Fay Animal Care and Control, and that way they can take them in, provide them warmth, provide them care, and take care of them. Being a nonprofit, we rely so heavily on volunteers and foster parents to help us out, and we love and appreciate our volunteers and foster parents so much. We even have a promo going home for the holidays, and we're encouraging people to, if you can't adopt, then just foster a dog or a cat for the next few weeks and give them a break from the shelter during the holidays. And if you do end up falling in love and wanting to adopt, we'll give you a discount on the adoption fee. Um, at the end of the month, we are doing a food drive, and that's sponsored by Nancy Barron and Associates. And so we are hoping to raise $15,000, and she will sponsor and match half of that at $7,500. But I mentioned earlier that we have such a huge need for actual food. Our food budget is tripled, you know, just this past month, triple what we projected. And that's a big cost, and people don't realize. We have a lot of big dogs, and a lot of big dogs are staying with us for a while. So that's big bellies and big mouths to feed. So we're hoping to raise $15,000, and that will run the last of December the 21st through the 24th. People can donate online, on the website, on social, on Venmo. Like I said, there's very easy, simple ways to donate to us. And that will just give us the money to have in our budget to continue purchasing food for the dogs and cats. There's lots of ways for people to get involved. And if you can't adopt, then you can volunteer. You can foster, you can donate, you can stop by and check out a dog for the day and take it for a car ride, take it for a walk. There's lots of ways to give back without thinking that you actually have to add a pet to your household or even reach into your wallet. Twinkling lights bring cheer to the season, but like most everyone, you've probably found a few strands that aren't working. Seth Holbrook tells us what to do to dispose of those broken lights. Holiday recycling is starting here in Lexington once again. The Division of Environmental Services is beginning its holiday light and electronics uh, collection program. That will continue through January 14th of 2024. So there's all kinds of time for folks to get their holiday lights, their cords of all kinds, like extension cords and rope lights, electronic candles, all different kinds of things like that can be taken to any one of our 11 different drop-off locations located across Fayette County. That way things can be properly disposed of and hopefully easily disposable for all of the different folks. None of uh, those electronic waste items should be placed in curbside recycling carts ever just because they pose a risk to our recycling center staff and the machinery located there. Uh, lights can easily get tangled in the machinery and causing delays and issues with uh, breaking the machinery itself, as well as the electronics posing a safety risk to the uh, staff who work there and uh, deal with all of those items during sorting. So right now during our electronics recycling program, we're accepting holiday string lights, as well as rope lights, electronic candles, um, extension cords, things like that. Uh, as well as uh, small other uh, electronics like bulbs and things like that. The Electronics Recycling Center, which is open year round, uh, located on Versailles Road, typically operates six days a week, Monday through Saturday, although hours change, especially during the holiday season. It's always recommended that folks visit lexingtonky.gov slash e-waste to find out more information about that center. But they accept those items year round uh, and they accept a full list of items as well, including things like uh, computers, printers, copiers, um, 
ink cartridges and toner cartridges to go along with those things. The cables typically associated with all of those items, so HDMI cables, coaxial cables, USB and power cables, uh, microwaves, televisions, uh, computer monitors, vacuums, CDs, DVDs, VHS tapes, cassette tapes, all of those. During light collection, we're not accepting any of those larger items that are typically accepted by the Electronics Recycling Center. Um, we're just collecting the items that are most likely to come up this time of year. So the holiday lights, the string lights, um, other plug-in items that uh, typically come with decorating the home. Um, there are uh, other uh, unacceptable items for the Electronic Cycl Recycling Center as well. Uh, when it comes to dropping off items at the Electronics Recycling Center, um, things need to be intact. So they uh, will accept broken items, they don't need to work, but uh, items such as TVs with broken screens or microwaves with the glass broken out of them, things like that, anything that would pose a risk to the staff there as well are not acceptable. For this current campaign, for more information, including uh, the full list of those 11 locations located around the city, folks can go to lexingtonky.gov slash lights. Uh, and for general information about electronic waste recycling, folks can visit lexingtonky.gov slash e-waste. There's some meeting coverage for you on Lex TV this week, and you can catch it here and streaming on our website. And you can find all of the most accurate and up-to-date information on all city business at LexingtonKY.gov. Here's this week's meeting cup. That's all for now, but as always, you can keep up with us on social media, check out the latest traffic updates on X at LexRex, or catch our live traffic cams on LexingtonKY.gov. For all of us at LexTV, I'm Neil Noah, and that's it.